binary numbers are confusing. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So let's make them unconfused of five. I'm just going to quickly go over some of this content, whether you missed or you need a refresher. Let's get going. All right, so the warm up that we did yesterday, you created your own number system using circles and squares. Yeah, we had that printout where you wanted to arrange circles and squares and see how many different patterns you could create. And then conceptually, we're thinking about, well, what if the number of patterns actually represented numbers? If you're confused, perfect. We still have a lot more to talk about. So activity wise, let's get into the meat of this. Uh, boop. One place value and there's two possible patterns. So if I have only a single place value, and this being the place value, both of these shapes would be a place. Each of these shapes would be a place value. And so what they're trying to say, and I think they're doing so very poorly with their graphics, is that you could either have a circle or a square. So if you only have one place value with two options, you could have a circle or a square. So that means if we just have one shape option, we have two possibilities, circle or square, and that's it. So one digit, one place value, we can only represent two different types of shapes. Now, what if we had two place values? And what they're getting at here is each place value could represent more. And I want to actually, because this has bothered me so much, and I think it has been tricky for students, let's go over here and let me try to explain what they're um, kind of explaining. All right. So if we only have one area, we can have an object. And if it can only be a circle or square, well, here's one option. I could represent a circle. Okay. Completely separately, I could also represent a... Did I just call that a circle because that's obviously a square? A circle. So now we can represent two things, not both at the same time, because we're only going to have one place value, right? So either a circle or a square. And that's it. Now, what if we have two place values, right? So what if we could have a square or circle? So we still have two possibilities here, but we also have another place. So we have two options on both of these. So we could have a square and a square, this being two place values, right? Two options, two areas we could have it. We could also have a circle and a circle. So this is maybe, I don't know, an 11. This is maybe zero, zero, just thinking of it in terms of numbers. So one, two, we've created two different patterns now. We could also though, create more. So if we still have two digits or two place values, well, that's not all we could do because we can also do this. We could also have a square, then a circle. That's another number maybe, or a circle, then a square. So maybe this is 11. Maybe this is zero, zero. Well, this would be one, zero, and this would be zero, one. So these would be different patterns. So with two place values, one, two, we could represent four different patterns. And that's what they're attempting to say back over here. All right, let's get back into it. It gets confusing quick. So I just want to be really clear. All right, so now what if we had three? Same idea here, guys. So if we had three, each of these is representing a place value. Well, this is one pattern, all circles. Now this could be another pattern, two circles and a square. This could be another pattern, circle, square, and so on. And notice these are all distinct patterns. So maybe if we magically know how to read shapes, we decide instead of a numbering system, we're going to use shapes to represent all of our numbers. Well, since these are distinct, I could always understand, oh yeah, that must mean one, right? Because this is a distinct, uh, distinct set of patterns. Uh, we started at zero. Computer science loves starting at zero. And that's because computers are zeros and ones. Uh, binary, true or false. And that's what we're getting into now. All right, let's keep going. Instead of two shapes, what if we had 10 shapes? Now, what they're going to get at is our numbering system. So when you go to count 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, well, you don't say 0, but 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 
What do you do when you hit 9? You're out of values, so you have to tack one on to the end, and you go into the double digits. That's what they're trying to do with these patterns, right? They're trying to say, hey, it's kind of similar to our form of counting. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Now they want you to think of these numbers as shapes, which sounds ridiculous, because they're numbers. We're humans, we read these as numbers, that's how we're trained. But let's pretend they're shapes. Why? Because this says so. Okay, so if we have two places, 100, and two shape patterns, let's see what we could do. So if these are all shapes, but really they're numbers, so they're trying to show you that numbers work the same way, but they want you to realize that if these were all shapes, we could also do this. We could create 10. So think of maybe a zero is actually our circle, maybe a one's actually our square, triangle, diamond, star, smiley face, whatever you need. But what they're saying is if you have different items that you can draw, you could represent a hundred different numbers if you had 10 different shapes. So with two digits, two areas, you can represent a hundred different numbers if you have 10 different shapes. Computers don't have 10 different shapes. They only have two, zero, one, true and false. So quiz, what comes next? Our point here is that when you're counting, we might not say 0, 99 because it's implied, right? If I say 99, I don't need to tell you there's a zero in front of it. But when I flip up, right, when I need to go to the next thing, I do have to put a number here. So now it becomes a three digit number, right? And so if we only have two digits, zero and one, what happens? I'll start at the number zero, then I'll get to one. Now what happens? What comes after one? Well, I would have to add a digit because one is the maximum. Similar to when you hit nine counting, nine, you have to add a digit. Nine's the maximum. So I put one zero for 10. Where is this heading to confusion? Binary. <laughs> Binary is a number system with two shapes, right? So again, zero, one, circle, square, whatever you need. Ooh, look, they're darker. Ooh, look, it's an oval. Ooh, wait, I wanted to go back. Where's my fancy graphics? Take me back. All right, binary is a system with two shapes, but really zero and one. All right, now making or organizing the list counting in binary, zero, 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 one, and so on. So again, this would just represent zero, but they wanna show you if we had three digits, right? So this represents zero, this is gonna represent one. One is our maximum though. So once we hit one, we have to smack something on to the end of this. And what can we do? I'm actually, let's pretend this isn't here for a second because I think it makes it so confusing. So zero, we have zero. Now I'm counting in binary and we only have two shapes, circle, square, or zero, one. Okay, well, I need to go up one. All right, zero, one, and I've hit my limit. Again, just like go counting to nine, once you hit your limit, you need to add a digit. So what do we do? Well, if you are at nine, do you go zero, nine? No, that makes no sense, right? That's not how our number system works. What you would do if you're at nine is you have to start over at, with the one. So instead we do one and then we put a zero here to represent that. Well, similar with binary, one is our maximum, not nine, but since one's our maximum, what do we gotta do? Zoop, zoop. And this is actually gonna represent three in binary since one, uh, two in binary, since one is our maximum. And now we can add another. Well, we have this place, right? So we can do one and one, and this would represent three in binary, zero, one, two, three. Well, uh-oh, one and one is our maximum, just like nine and nine would be the maximum. So what do we have to do? We need to add a digit. So now, when you hit 99, you go to 100. Well, when you hit 11, we have to add a digit. So we go to what is 100, but when in binary, it would be four. Okay, well, what's gonna come next then? Okay, well, think about counting regular numbers. We have two zeros, so we can do 101, but in binary, that's gonna be five. Now, what would come if you were at 109, right? Because again, this is the maximum place value. So you could kind of think of this as a 109. What do you have to do? Well, you have to flip it and you have to get to one 
10. Okay. And now, finally, once we're at 110, what's going to be the next one? Well, we can change the 0 to a 1. Uh, 110 is 6, by the way. And then 7. Now, we're not going to expect that you can read all these off the top of your head and be super geeks instantly, because, uh, yikes. But let's get into what we are going to expect. All right. So you're going to have access to this right in the power of 2, right? The whole number equivalent right a row of zeros, right one at the bottom. And then you're going to need to be cutting that out. And just to dive a bit more into this, I want to make sure you're understanding this. So on the back of these, you'll have ones and you can flip these up. So if I have a one here, that would represent the number one. Now, what if I had two flipped up? If I have two flipped up down here on this row, what I can do is look up a row and I can count how much that's going to represent, right? So 2 flipped up, well, 2 plus 1 is 3. So 2 flipped up would be a 3. 1, 1 is a 3. However, what if I just had 1 flip this back down, right? So this row is the row that matters. This is the row that flips. Flip this back down, and what if I just had a 1 and a 0 showing because this was flipped down? Well, what does that equal? Okay, well, 1 is 2, 0 is 0, so we don't count whatever number's there, and that would equal 2. Okay. Well, now let's say I have flipped up. I flipped up a 1 here and a 1 here. Now, these are flipped down. So let's say this would be 0 and 0. What does that equal? Once again, what you want to do is add the numbers. So 8 plus 4, 0 means 0, 0 means 0, so 12. So 11, 0, 0 in binary, must be 12. And then you can keep going all the way up to 128 to be representing these numbers, right? So one with all zeros, because you don't want to add anything else, that would be 128, okay? Bit confusing, but it helps, it really does. And again, each place value is gonna represent one bit. A bit can be a zero or one. Your flippy do <laughs> has eight bits, I love that name, which together make one byte. Oh gosh. And we're covering a lot here, but 8 bits are technically 1 byte. Try out your flippy do. Represent these decimal values in binary. Represent these binaries in decimal. I would start... Uh, let me escape out. Oops, looks, this shows you stuff. But let me start by showing you the resources. So if you're not stuck on what I'm looking at here, we can dive in here. User unit 1, right? And here we are, lesson resources. Let me just give this a click. And here's my flippy do. If I need to print that out, you should have yours though, students. <laughs> um, and then here is the activity guide. So flippy do, I'm going to fill this out. Now, what the heck are you talking about? This will aid in that. Also, if you need a, a bit more of a push on how this is going to come to be, what we're going to start with on this flippy do is what they show, showed us here, right, on this slide. So our goal, right, in these, then we need their whole numbers. Then what you're doing is write a row of zeros with ones flipping. So you only need to cut here. And that's because we're going to do this activity where you can represent all of these numbers with zeros and ones, well, portions of them. So once you have that ready to rock, let's again, here's your class and resources. Here's that flippy do you need to fill out. And let's take a look. Their examples, we're not going to do all of this. But what they were doing, and what we already did to some degree, was... I'm going to just fill these in. Five, six, seven, right? And what we could represent with these, well, we already took a look at seven and what we just did. But if this is 2, what comes after 2? And we can put these zeros here. You might want to, since that's in the example. I myself don't require it, because they're not entirely necessary. But you could, and 0, 0, 1, 1 would be 3, or just 11. And again, that's because, and that's because at 10, we are out of places. And so 3, again, think of these like, numbers. So 3 would be 0, 0, 1, 1. Now, think of this. If we have 1, 1, that's our maximum, right? We can only use zeros and ones. You don't necessarily have to put the zeros. It depends on your preference. But if 
we only have one one, think of that as nine nine. We can only use a zero and a one. Well, if this is nine nine, what's our only option? We'd have to go to a hundred, except now a hundred is four, right? Because we don't have a 10 number system. We have a two option number system. All right, well, what comes after a hundred? Well, we have one zero zero. Well, we can still use one, so one zero one. And now that means five. And let's go ahead on to six, okay. Well, now we have 101 above, right? But one is our maximum. So think of this as 109. What do we have to do? 110. Okay, well at 110, what can we do now? Well, we can flip up because we do have the digit, we do have the number one we can use. Seven, so on and so forth. Now we're at our maximum. Think of 111 as 999. So what do you gotta do? You gotta do 1000 and that would be eight. And then you're gonna wanna keep going. What do you notice when you compare odd with even numbers? Ooh. All right, so even, odd, even, odd, even, odd, even. They're getting at something pretty specific here. So I would look for patterns. Even, odd, even, odd. Look for something all even numbers have. Maybe a number at the start, maybe a number at the end, maybe a number at the middle. That is different, but all odd numbers have. So look for a pattern, something that's going on that's going to be universal for even numbers, and then something that's different for all odd. Binary numbers with exactly one. Ooh, so be careful here, because notice they're counting up and they're just moving the ones place. So 100, but think, thankfully you'll have this to reference. All right, decimal equivalent. This is a what do you think, so hey, what do you notice? Find the equivalent binary decimal below. Ooh, they are just being cruel. Well, we already did five up here. Boom, right? So one, oh, one. It's going to be a bit more difficult to count this high. However, you will have your handy dandy flippy do. So for instance, binary, what's 128? Well, you would want to flip over this one right? And that would represent 128. And then you would want all of these to be zero. Binary, what is three? Well, you would want to flip over this one, that's one, and this two, and that's three. So you can really use your flippy do to create these numbers. And if you have to, you might check around to confirm your results. When you add zero to the right of the decimal, it multiplies the value by 10. What similar result to the value of binary when you add a zero to the right. Oh, right. So when I go to 100 and 10 to 100 in normal counting, that multiplies by 10. In binary, when I go to 11 to 100, what is that doing? 11 to 100. So look for when you add a digit, what's it doing to your number? These are identical, right? Zeros in front don't mean anything. I don't know how else to say that. Just like in just like in normal counting, zero zero. If I say zero 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 five 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 five, or I say five 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 five, those would be the same. Those zeros don't represent anything. Would you be in to assign? Ooh. So to each unique vowel of the English language, how many unique vowels are there? Depending on how you're counting them, maybe five-ish. Well, when we can go up here, if we only have two digits, right? So we would only be able to use these first two to make any changes. How high can we get to with only two digits? If we can only make those first two changes, okay? So be conscious of that. And also be conscious we're starting at zero, but this would still be one vowel, two vowel, three vowels. How many vowels could we represent? How many bits would you need to count if you wanted to count to the decimal number 1000, use your flippy do to get a rough idea for that. Okay, so I, I don't know what else to say. Use your flippy do to get a rough idea and good luck. Binary numbers are confusing, but if you work through them step by step, they're less challenging. All right, onward.